Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Thanks for tuning in. I want to give you a little background on today's episode. A few years ago, I was fishing with a buddy. In fact, we were ice fishing, not just fishing, but we were sitting over a hole jigging and we caught a couple of bass when we were doing that. And when we were fishing, I was using a bait that I had never used before. And it was something that never crossed my mind to even give a try for bass. But after that ice fishing trip and catching a few bass, I realized, hey, there might be some opportunity here, not just through the ice, but on the open water. So that's what I wanna talk about today is that bait. Before I get into it, I do wanna remind you guys, if you're looking for a little additional content from me, please check out my members only content, do a bunch of extra videos, members only live streams, you have direct access to me, all things that might settle your demand and need for extra content from me. Also guys, if you wanna support the channel, please check out the Tackle Warehouse affiliate link that I provide in the description of the video. It's a great way to support the channel and very much appreciated. And honestly, I don't even know if you can buy this bait through Tackle Warehouse because it is considered an ice fishing bait. Well, it was considered an ice fishing bait. Nowadays, a lot of people are using it for open water fishing. And specifically, this is, getting a knot, the Berkeley Snap Jig. So what makes this bait so unique is the fact that it's got this little bit of a wing system on the bottom so that when you pull this bait up and let it fall, it will glide. It does not just vertical jig up and down. That's one of the reasons why those ice fishermen love it so much. They're sitting over a hole, they can't move their bait, but every time they rise this bait and let it fall, it goes outside of that hole circumference. So it really does allow them to cover a little bit of additional water. But more than anything, that irregular fall generates some of those reaction strikes and that's what gets the fish to bite. So if you're not an ice fisherman like me, I very rarely do it, what we found is this bait works great in the open water as well. And it's actually one of my favorite cold water scenario baits. You know, when I realized that I caught those bass through the ice, it works for cold water fish. So for me, we're sitting here, this is middle of November, we've got water temps right around 40 degrees. This is gonna be one of the baits that I'm gonna choose to use during these extremely cold water temperatures because I already know it works during the ice fishing season, but because it does a phenomenal job at mimicking the dying bait fish. We get a lot of bait fish die off anytime you have a drastic water temperature change. It's that survival of the fittest. So when water temperatures get really cold, falling into the 40 degree range or even less, you start to get bait fish that die off. When those bait fish die off, they float to the bottom. They don't float to the surface, they float to the bottom. In fact, they don't just float to the bottom because that doesn't make sense, but they sink to the bottom and they do it usually in a manner where they actually tail kick a few times, go back to the bottom, tail kick, like they're trying to fight for their life. But what happens is they slowly sink to the bottom. That creates an extremely easy meal for very lethargic bass. Largemouth, spotted bass, smallmouth, they all recognize that dying bait fish is an easy meal. And that's what they're gonna be keying in on because when you have water temperatures that are in the 40s, you don't have crayfish. The crayfish are hibernating, so the bass are gonna be keying in on those you know, shad and bait fish that are dying off. So when you have a bait that's on the bottom and you jig it up and then an irregular falls back to the bottom, what that does is it creates that dying bait fish appearance and that makes it the target for the bass that we're after. So that's one of the reasons why it's so good. From the, uh, the bait itself, they make this in a lot of different sizes in terms of the weight as well as the hook size. So you can use it with different baits. I like to go with the lightest weight possible for the, the, the uh, depth of water that I'm fishing. So in this case, this is the quarter ounce size. They go all the way up to three quarter ounce. I think the three quarter ounce you can get with like a six ounce hook. So you can really put a big bait on it. For me, I like to go with a smaller size weight because that 
uh, increases the amount of gliding distance every time I drop the bait. The heavier bait that you have, the faster it wants to fall to the bottom. And I'm looking to maximize the gliding distance. This is one of my favorite trailers. This is the four inch Kitek Shad Impact trailer. You want a straight tailed bait, whether it's a, a jerk shad or a fluke, a straight tailed bait will increase the amount of gliding distance. If you go with a minnow that's got a boot tail, when that boot tail kicks, it creates drag and therefore limits the gliding distance of your bait. So generally speaking, I always fish a straight tailed shad imitating bait like this uh, shad impact. And that's really what it comes down to from a setup standpoint. Fishing wise, it's very easy. You know, if you're, you can vertical jig it. And if you're vertical jigging it, I just like to give a quick pop, just like that. Cause when you give it the, the quick pop, the bait will come up and then just decide to glide in whatever direction that it can. But if I'm using it for open water fishing and I'm generally trying to target either steep drop-offs where I can throw it on top of the drop and bring it off that drop-off where it glides down the drop, or I'm looking for rock piles that are generally gonna be anywhere from probably 15 to 35 feet of water. When that happens, I'm throwing it out and I'm generally going to engage my reel and just let it pendulum. I'm tight lining it down to the bottom. And then when it gets down to the bottom, I'm just giving it quick pops with my rod. I'm not really trying to like stroke the rod up. I'm just using my wrist, giving it a quick pop. That's gonna get it three or four feet off the bottom. And then it's gonna glide on that fall. So it's a very simple retrieve. But one tip with this, especially in cold water, let that bait after it glides, let it sit on the bottom because a lot of times those dying bait fish are going to settle to the bottom and it takes the fish a few seconds to decide to eat it. So I'll let it sit there and then I'll give it another quick snap, hence the name snap jig. Uh, and at that point I'll let it fall back down. So it's definitely a very uh, easy retrieve, but it's one where you want to pay attention. You want to watch your line to see if you get a bite after you snap it up. And when you go to snap it off the bottom, a lot of times that's where the fish are gonna be at that point. Uh, very simple retrieve. From a rod and reel perspective, generally speaking, I'm fishing this on spinning gear. So I'm going with either a medium light or a medium action 7.3 spinning rod. I make my own, so this is the MHX NSJ872. So it's, a, it's like a light medium action rod. Uh, I've got it on, again, depending on the, the water color and the depth that I'm fishing, I'm generally gonna have it on eight to 12 pound test fluorocarbon to you know a 10 to 20 pound mainline leader uh, of braid or mainline braided uh, backing. And at that point, you know, from a reel standpoint, I just want a good spinning reel that's got a good solid uh, drag on it. If you're throwing the heavier models, like the half ounce and three quarter ounce, which is a good thing to be throwing, say on your ledge lakes down in the TVA, at that point, by all means, you can throw it on bait casting gear. But generally speaking, I like to throw the lightest possible to remain good bottom contact. If you've got a strong wind, you'll probably have to increase up in size or you're fishing a bigger bait, you gotta increase a little bit up in size too, at which point you can go with the bait casting gear. But it's a very good technique for fishing in your extremely cold water situations. It's a proven technique that really has not touched the bass market yet. This is a technique that the walleye guys have been using for a long time and having a lot of success to the point where they catch a lot of bass with it and they know how good it can be, be, be for bass. So I'd highly recommend if you live in an area with a lot of cold water, give it a try. In fact, even if you're in a warm water zone, you know, if you're down in Florida right now, you can be throwing this on shell beds, generating strikes as well. It just, for me, has always been more of a, a cold water bait. But check them out, the Berkeley Snap Jig. It's really a, uh, a bait that's got some great action to it and deserves to be tried. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and let me know in the comment section. If you throw the Snap Jig, let me know what you think about it and what tips you may have for the other viewers. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll have a new video tomorrow.